In this lecture, we are going to learn about another angular element called ng container. The ng container is a special angular element that can hold structural directives without adding new elements to the DOM. Let's try to understand ng container with some examples. To understand ng container, here I have created a brand new Angular project called Angular ng container. And if I go to the source folder in this app folder, we have only one component, which is this app component. And if I go to the app component.html file, there we have our default Angular HTML. So again, I'll delete it from here. One of the common use cases of ng container is alongside the ng if structural directive. Let's understand this with an example. So here I'm going to use ng container. Okay, this is an Angular element. On this ng container, I'm going to use ng if structural directive. And to this, we can assign some condition. So what we will do is we'll create a button element here. Let's call this button element maybe toggle. All right. And on this, we will bind click event. And whenever this click event happens on this button element, let's call a method called on toggle. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's create this method in our component class in the app component class. And here, let's also create a property of type Boolean. So I'll call it toggle. It is going to be of type Boolean. Okay. And initially, let's set it to false. Or maybe let's set it to true. And whenever this toggle will be called, inside this we will say this dot toggle equals not of this dot toggle. So if the toggle value is true, in that case, when the button will be clicked, we want to set it to false. And if it is false, we want to set it to true. Okay, that's what we are doing here. And we are going to use this toggle property here on this ng if directive. So here I will simply say toggle. And in this ng container, let's create a paragraph element. And here let's say the toggle is on. Okay, with this, if we save the changes, let's go to the web page. And here you see it says toggle is on. If I click on this, in this case, toggle will be false. And in that case, this ng container will be hidden and this paragraph will not be displayed. But if I go ahead and if I click on it again, the toggle will be set to true. And in that case, that paragraph will be displayed again. Okay. Now here, when we click on this toggle and when the toggle is false, it is not displaying anything. But instead of doing that, what we want is, if the toggle is true, we want to show this paragraph, the toggle is on. But if the toggle is false, we want to show the paragraph, the toggle is off. For that, let me go ahead and let me copy this ng container from here. Let's paste it here. And here, I will remove this ng if statement from here. And here, I will specify a template reference variable. And I will simply call it toggle off. Okay, and I'll copy this template reference variable. Here, I will put a semicolon. And then I will say else. And then I will specify the template reference variable name. And here you will notice that here on this else we have an error. And here the error says type HTML element is not assignable to type template ref. That's because when we are using this else here, here we are specifying a template reference variable. And this template reference variable, it is pointing to this ng container. But here when we are using else, there it is expecting a template reference variable, which is pointing to ng template. So here we cannot use ng container, but we should be using ng template okay, and here also the closing text should also be ng template if we save the changes now so when the toggle is true in that case this ng container will be displayed that means this paragraph will be displayed this ng container will not be rendered in the web page keep this point in mind in the same way this ng template that will also not get rendered in the web page so if the toggle is on this paragraph will be rendered in the web page but if the toggle is off, in that case, this paragraph will be rendered in the web page. And here I want to say the toggle is off. All right. So let's save the changes. Initially, toggle is set to true. If you see, its initial value is true. So let's go to the web page. When it is true, it shows the toggle is on. Let me actually increase the font size here. Okay. 
So when the toggle is true, it is displaying this paragraph, the toggle is on. But when I click on this toggle, at that time, the toggle will be set to false. And in that case, it will display this paragraph, the toggle is off. Again, if I click on this toggle button, now it says the toggle is on. Again, if I click, the toggle is off. So this is one use case where we can use ng container with ng if directive. Another use case of ng container is with ng template outlet directive, which we talked about in our last lecture. So here, what I will do is I will open that project. And the name of the project is Angular ng template. So let me open this project. Let's go to command prompt. And currently we are in Angular ng container folder. So first I will move one folder up. For that, let's use the cd command. Let's move one folder up. And from there, we want to go to Angular ng template project. If I press enter, now we are in the Angular ng template project. There, let's say ng serve so that this project will be compiled and a live development server will open and there this project will run okay so if i go to browser now and if i reload this page now that project should be rendered here all right so let's go to vs code so here you see we are using this ng template outlet directive and we are using it on a div but instead of using it on a div here also we can use ng container okay and the closing tag should also be ng container if i save the changes and if we go back to the web page the application should still be working as expected so still we are seeing the same content but now instead of using div here we are using ng container so keep in mind that this ng template outlet directive it can be applied to any element like earlier we applied it on div element but most of the time it is applied to ng container by combining these two, we get a very clear and easy to follow HTML and DOM structure in which no extra elements are necessary and template views are instantiated where requested. So this is another use case where we can use ng container. But the main use case of ng container is to use it when we want to use multiple structural directive. So we have learned that we cannot use multiple structural directive on the same HTML element. So ng container allows us to use structural directives without any extra element making sure that the only dom changes being applied are those dictated by the directives themselves let's understand this with another example for that let's open our ecart project so again from here i'll select the ecart project we have this ecart project in this project folder so i'll select it let's again go back to command prompt and from here, let's move to ecart folder. So from the current directory, from this Angular ng template directory, we want to move one folder up. And then from there, so from this Angular complete course folder, we want to go to Angular ecart project folder. Okay, now we are in Angular ecart project folder. There, let's run ng serve command. Okay, and let's go ahead and let's refresh the page here so now our ecart project should be loaded let me go ahead and let me decrease the size here to 100 percent all right now here if you notice we are rendering all our products and we are rendering it by using ng for directive and looping over the product array so if i go to vs code there let's go to product list component okay let's open product list component.html and here if you notice we are repeating this app product now in order to repeat this app product component we are using this ng4 directive here and we are using this ng4 directive on this div now we are adding this div only because we cannot use this ng4 directive on this app product because there we are already using this ng if directive and we learned that we cannot use two structural directives on the same element so that's why we had to create this div and we had to use this ng4 directive on that div and because of this what is happening is if i go to the web page and if we inspect it you see here we have the product list in there we have this div if i expand this div here we are displaying all the products and for all these products you see we have this extra div and on that div we have this app product right 
so here we don't want this div this div is not necessary but since we are using this ng4 directive on that div that's why we have created this div but now what we can do is instead of using this div here we can use ng container okay let's do the same thing here so for the closing tag also let's specify ng container and now if we go to the web page let me refresh the page here and now you will notice that in the product list we have this app filter we have this div and in this div we don't have any other div we directly have this app product okay so now we are directly rendering the app product this ng container that is not being rendered in the dom it is directly rendering this app product so this is the main use of ng container okay now let's go back to the web page and let's quickly test if the click is working here or not because if you notice we are using this click on ng container so let's see if this click is working or not so when i click on this first product it is not working so this click here is not working so what we will do is we'll go back and we will bind this click event i'll cut it from here and we will bind it on this app product itself so here we are binding the property here we have ng if structural directive okay after that let me also go ahead and let me bind the click event here like this let's save the changes again let's go back to the web page and now let's see if it is working or not so now the click event is working and we can see the product details okay if i click on some other product that product detail is being displayed here so i hope with this lecture now you understand the use of ng container this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day